quick run through of the ingredients the pimento, the jespic, the bandana, and we have some garlic, some seasoning, the fresh mango that we have washed, and some a carrot, salt, and vinegar. And I'm going to use some homemade browning. I'll put the link above in the cards. All right, so now let's put all the ingredients that you see here plus our habanero peppers. And I also use two scotch bonnet peppers just to balance the heat a little bit. So let's get started. So I'm going to take all of the seasoning and wash them to remove all the sand. Because as you saw, I picked them from my garden. And I'm going to place half cup of water into my blender and half cup of my browning and all of the seasoning that we picked and plus what I had in the fridge also I add half teaspoon of salt and I'm adding the entire carrot and our peppers I use three habanero and two scotch bonnet I'm going to blend this once blended till smooth I am then going to add in my mango. Before using the mango, I washed it and placed it in the refrigerator so when I'm ready for it, it would be cool. And I only use half cup because the mango is a very ripe mango, so it al already have enough liquid in there to blend everything. So I'm peeling my very overripe mango, and as it fell on the ground, it got even more soft. So cutting it and placing it into the sauce and blend it up some more. And then once everything is blend smooth, I am going to put into a pot on the stove. And I didn't mention that I also put two tablespoons of my vinegar. So once blended till smooth, I am going to place in my preheating pan on my stove and let that bubble for. I left that bubbling on a very low heat for three minutes. You don't want it to burn because remember this have molasses in it and also the mango was sweet so we don't want the sugar there to start to burn on us at all. So once it has cooked there and bubbled up for that 3 to 5 minutes, I'm going to remove it and place some salt and stir in the salt because I find it needed a little more salt. So I stir that in. And that's how I did my sauce. And now I have some pre-seasoned chicken. I am going to use this and make some mango habanero chicken. So I am going to steam my chicken, just some the boneless bone part of the meat, like the wing and the back and the neck. I love bone. I don't like too much of meaty meat. And I'm going to bring that to a boil. Once the meat is cooked, I am going to remove it, saving my stock to make a barbecue sauce. And I am going to place my chicken into our mango habanero sauce that we just made and coat it properly. At this point is when I put my broiler to hot up and I am going to make sure that everything is coated properly when I place this chicken into this mango habanero sauce. And believe you me, this was not hot. It really wasn't hot. It might sound like, oh my gosh but it isn't <laughs> so once my chicken is coated like you're seeing here straight from the steam and we're going to place we're not going to let the chicken cool long at all and place the sauce on it and once all of my chicken is coated i am going to place it into the broiler i left it for four minutes on each side in the broiler all right so what did we do we made our sauce we steam some chicken, we coat the chicken with the sauce. While that is happening, we preheat our broiler and now we place it on some parchment paper and we're going to put that into the broiler for five minutes on this side. Once that is done, we're going to take it out, turn it over and put it for the next five minutes. And that's how easy I made it. Now, you could fry your chicken. You don't have to go through the whole process of steaming it and all of that. But as you all know, those of you who have been watching me for a long time know that I am on a healthy lifestyle journey. Eating healthier, 
to fit my new diet. So I'm not going to fry this chicken. I steam the chicken and place this sauce on it, put it in the broiler and cook. So after the first five minutes, as you can see, I'm turning it around and I'm going to add more of the sauce. Also the sauce that is on the parchment paper, I'm also going to reuse it and place it on that chicken and place it back in the broiler for another five minutes. This thing was so delicious. I love spice, but I don't love too much spice. And I was really surprised how not hot this sauce was really enjoyable. Not hot whatsoever. Edna, Edna, you would enjoy this sauce. But then again, you have the mango balancing of the heat and you also have the sugar from the molasses balancing all the heat. So there is a great, great balance of heat. And as I said, I didn't use only habanero peppers. I used a scotch bonnet pepper. And this is it. After the 10 minutes complete, this is what it looks like. I garnish with some red pepper flakes and cilantro. And that's how easy I made my version of a mango habanero sauce. What did we do? We blended up all the mango and the seasoning with some vinegar and some molasses. We bring that to a boil on the fire once everything is blended smoothly and we don't want to burn it. Then we will take that particular sauce that we just made, our mango habanero sauce, and we're going to use it on some chicken and place it in the broiler, not in the oven. All right and adjust the salt as you see fit. I just needed a little more salt just to bring out to complement actually the extra sugar from the molasses and the mango. And then we place it on our chicken, place it into the broiler, five minutes on each side. Remember our chicken is already cooked, so we're not gonna cook it, but we just want that sauce to infuse the chicken and get a nice crunch to dry up a little bit on the chicken so every bite you are getting a taste of that delightful sauce and it was very easy and simple and if you don't like spice it is easy tweakable thanks for watching so in conclusion so this is what it looks like This bottle was actually full. <laughs>